turned out at Forest Court about to testify on behalf of Dr. Block is Rhonda Smithers, one of his nurses. I do. All right, let me hear from this witness. Thank you. Ms. Smithers, how would you describe Dr. Block's conduct in the office? Dr. Block is a professional. I've never known him to even flirt with a patient or any member of the medical staff. And we were not making love in that exam room. Also, Dr. Block is a very dedicated husband. His wife was constantly interrupting our work with hysterical phone calls and unannounced visits. But Dr. Block would always find the time, excuse himself from his patients, and talk to her until she felt better. Thank you. Your Honor, I have here the laboratory slip referred to by Mrs. Block in her testimony and which has been marked Defendant's Exhibit A in our pretrial conference. May I approach the witness, please? You may. Thank you. Ms. Smithers, would you please explain this slip? Yes. When she burst into the office that day, Dr. Block tried to explain about the botched up pregnancy report that she had heard about. You see, I accidentally typed in Dr. Michael Block in the space for the patient's name on the lab request slip. The lab, someone at the lab crossed out doctor and hand wrote in Mrs. If you check the slip, you will see that the only thing that's not typed is the Mrs. on, the, on this erroneous slip. Thank you. No further questions. Let me see that exhibit, please. All right, cross-examination, Ms. Cole. Ms. Smithers, weren't you fired from your last job because you were having an affair with a doctor? Objection, Your Honor. That's an improper attempt to impeach this witness. I agree. The objection is sustained. Ask your next question. Weren't you and Dr. Block engaged in sex when Tina Harper found the two of you in the examining room? Tina is a liar. She's always hated me because I'm younger and much more competent than her. What is your relationship to Jessica Weiler? Jessica is my best friend. When you and Dr. Block tired of each other, didn't you introduce Jessica to him as a new sexual partner? No. Jessica needed a gynecologist, that's all. Didn't Dr. Block grant you special permission for two-hour lunches and three-day weekends because you covered up his affair with Jessica Weiler? First of all, Dr. Block was not having an affair. Secondly, I worked hard and overtime for those privileges. Did working overtime include covering up their child born out of wedlock? No, absolutely not. Jessica has been living with the same guy for the last three years. He is the father of the baby, not Dr. Block. No further questions. All right, you may step down. Mr. Beverly, call your next witness. I have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Anything further from the plaintiff? Yes, I would like to reopen and call Charles Whitney, a rebuttal witness right, that has step... important right, evidence forward. to the case. Step forward. About to take the stand on behalf of Susan Block is Charles Whitney. Mr. Whitney has come forward with evidence which Mrs. Block's attorney apparently believes is of such magnitude as to cast doubt on Dr. Block's testimony. Mrs. Block contends her husband has fathered another woman's child. All right, let me hear from this witness. Can you please tell the court why you've come forward today? Yes. My name is Charles Whitney, and I'm the director of the La Rilo Laboratories. And recently we performed blood tests on Dr. Block, Jessica Weiler, her baby, and her fiance, Al Morgan. All of them tested as having type O blood. Subsequently, Mrs. Block asked me to perform more sophisticated tests. My findings are in the report that I gave you before. Your Honor, I'd like to submit Mr. Whitney's report as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Sir, we'll mark it for identification. Go ahead. What were your findings as indicated by this report? Well, it took me a while to reach a conclusion because the condition is so rare but I found anomalies in the blood of Dr. Block and the baby. You see, they both carried the recessive gene for Tay-Sachs disease. Neither Ms. Weiler nor her fiance carry that gene. That's how I knew that Dr. Block is, in fact, the father of the baby. Oh, wait a minute. Objection, Your Honor. That calls for a conclusion. I, I agree. I'm going to strike that portion of the answer. Go ahead. No further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you. Isn't it true that any man with recessive Tay-Sachs disease could have passed that gene on to Jessica Weiler's baby? I suppose so, but the... Well, well wait, weren't you and Mrs. Block a fellow employees at another laboratory? Yes, but we haven't actually seen each other in years. And weren't you, in fact, paid off by Mrs. Block to falsify this information and bring that report here today? Any respectable lab could run the same tests and come up with exactly the same results. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Anything further now from the uh, plaintiff? No, Your Honor. Anything further from the defendant? No, Your Honor. Let me hear your closing argument. Michael Block has carried on an adulterous affair 
He fathered the child of Jessica Weiler, then used his wife's name fraudulently to cover the medical expenses. Susan Block should be granted a divorce on the grounds of adultery. She should also be awarded possession of the family home, 70% of the couple's savings and investments, half of her husband's pension plan worth $80,000, and $4,000 a month in spousal support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Mr. Beverly, let me hear your closing argument. Yes, Your Honor. I, I hope that you're not going to be swayed by these last-minute desperation tactics and theatrics put on by the plaintiff here today. They've produced nothing but jealous, paranoid women who are telling lies about the defendant here today. During all this time, Dr. Block has been a sympathetic husband, but his well of sympathy has now run dry, and he sadly asks for a divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty. He again requests that he be awarded his medical practice, the hard-earned pension, as well as one half of the investments and his uh, treasured collection of first edition books. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. While Judge Keene reviews the testimony in this case, we have time for a break.